Hi, I'm Mike Stanton. This is the Build America Mutual Weekly Update. I'm here with Brian Babler and Dan Bingham from BAM's Capital Markets Desk. Uh, gentlemen, thanks for joining us. Obviously, today is uh, both a day in the market, but also a day of remembrance for the attacks on New York City 19 years ago. Uh, at BAM, we, uh, we live that memory every day. Our offices are right across the street from Ground Zero. Uh, but days like this, it's uh, important to take a moment to, to pause and think about the people, our industry, as well as uh, the city and uh, the nation lost. Uh, both the victims and the first responders who responded. So uh, we appreciate all of those sacrifices. Uh, that said, we did have an active market this week and I uh, want to recap what happened. And so Dan, uh, why don't you uh, take us through what happened in the interest rate markets this week? Sure, thanks Mike. The treasury market continued in, in a very uh, tight range this week as the 10 year treasury is at 0.67 basis points and the 30 year uh, currently at 142. Um, with that, uh, on the MMD side and the tax exempt side, we continue to see uh, also a large degree of uh, stability um, with 10 year MMD at a 0.84 and 30 year MMD up one basis point from last week at a 158. Um, you know, calendar this week was uh, uh, at 8 point uh, odd billion. Um, pretty large calendar given the Labor Day and the holiday shortened week. Um, and next week, uh, calendar expecting to come in just over $10 billion. So again, uh, you know, heavy issuance. There is that same component of the breakdown between um, the taxable and tax again. Um, about 20% of next week's calendar is expecting to be taxable. So still a pretty heavy uh, component on the taxable side of things. Um, and probably the biggest issue in the muni market uh, continues to be this prospect of a uh, stimulus. Uh, the the uh, Republicans announced a plan for a reduced stimulus in the 300 billion range um, that was shot down as uh, they couldn't get it through the filibuster. Um, and uh, fears, I guess, are, are starting to build that, uh, given the election in, in a little over a month, um, that the any prospect of a stimulus might be delayed not only into the fourth quarter but beyond. Um, the, the return of the next Congress into January, February of 2021. Um, so, you know, continue market uh, uh, participants continue to watch that very closely. Um, and we have seen uh, some pressures on the big name, uh, higher yield parts of the market um, and sectors that continue to come under pressure, including MTA and uh, some other credits out there. And you make a great point. Um, just now, uh, just earlier today on Friday, the Municipal Analyst Group of New York Magni had a web seminar on exactly this topic. And Emily Brock, who runs the uh, the lobbying effort for the Government Finance Officers Association, uh, she pointed out there are only 10 days left uh, in the congressional calendar to vote on the stimulus package between now and September 30th. So, uh, you know, they, they will have to move pretty quickly. Uh, there are green shoots of, of some uh, signs of negotiation between the White House and the House uh, Democrats. And Mark Zandi at uh, Moody's Analytics said on that same call that he is uh, forecasting a $1.5 trillion stimulus as part of his estimates that show the economy continuing to grow going into 2021. He mentioned that if that does not pass uh, by October, he thinks the economy will go back into recession. So hopefully that word uh, passes on Capitol Hill and they understand the urgency of doing something. Um, Dan, just want to ask you one other question. Um, on the uh, on the fundamental side and the technical side, uh, we did see a little rebound in cash flows, uh, investor cash flows, uh, to municipal mutual funds this week. They're up to a billion dollars after sinking down to 139 million, according to Lipper last week. Um, how does that uh, driving uh, likely price activity? You know, we've seen close to 20 weeks of continual inflows and uh, we saw a trend up until last week where it was 2 billion, 1 billion down to 100 million or so. Um, and there was some speculation or some concern that the flows could actually flatten out or, or, and or turn negative, um, which is certainly, uh, given some pretty good support for the market in here um, and pretty good stability in the face of an overall very heavy calendar. Um, but the rebound uh, this week was uh, pretty positive, especially given the, the holiday nature of things in here. Um, so it was a, uh, a welcome uh, amount of flows coming back into the market. Um, so if that continues, I think, uh, you know, we'll see uh, very good stability in the higher quality parts of the market. And the uh, the only point to add to that, um, one of the dynamics that people watch very closely around this time of the year is uh, is the support after uh, the, the most significant uh, coupon reinvestment and maturity season of kind of June, July um, type, uh, type timeframe. So 
leading into September, October, substantially fewer maturities, calls, things like that to reinvest into the market. So fresh cash flow is, uh, is definitely welcome for stability. And so, Brian, what did you see as those new issues priced this week? I know uh, BAM's calendar was not quite as busy as it was through the month of August, but it's still substantial, well over $200 million. Yeah, you know, as Dan mentioned, for a holiday week, uh, pretty robust in terms of supply. So uh, the market definitely digested things pretty well. Um, you know, it did feel like things were a little bit barbelled, um, where the curve um, kind of wanted to steepen a little bit. Uh, there was more support in the front end on a lot of the deals. Uh, and then, uh, you know, the intermediate and back end of, uh, of, some, uh, of some maturities kind of, uh, you know, just did okay. Um, but overall, it seemed like supply was really well received. Uh, for BAM's activity, uh, we priced almost uh, 250 million of par. Uh, so a nice active week, uh, as you mentioned, not quite as robust as, as it's been the last several weeks, but, uh, but still a pretty good outcome nonetheless. Um, one of the notable things to mention uh, is that we priced um, a, uh, a three Green Star deals highlighted by a $53 million sale priced by Wells Fargo for uh, Rosedale Rio Bravo Water Storage District, which brought our total Green Star portfolio to north of $1.5 billion. Uh, away from that, uh, $32 million Apple Valley PFAs was priced by Stiefel. And uh, 26 million Cloverleaf School District was priced by R.W. Baird. Uh, those were COPs in Ohio uh, and had a combination of mostly taxable with some bank qualified paper as well. Um, so nice, active and diverse week across the board. Great. And as we look ahead to next week, I know there are a couple of uh, a lighter calendar again, but uh, what, what stands out to you? Yeah, next week will be pretty uh, pretty concentrated in some of the larger names that are coming to the market. Um, about a billion two of New York City TFA. Uh, 900 million New York MTA, as Dan mentioned, uh, and you know that'll sell competitively. It's all out long. Uh, we'll see if they, uh, you know, if it ends up selling competitively um, or uses uh, some of the assistance program. Uh, there's going to be a large deal for Houston Airport over 800 million. So it's very concentrated uh, overall. Um, BAM should be uh, should be pretty active again. Uh, we've got a decent amount of Pennsylvania uh, school districts coming to market. Um, uh, led by Harrisburg uh, and Penn Hills School District. And, and back on the Green Star front, I know there's a, a little unusual transaction. BAM is providing a debt service reserve fund surety uh, insurance policy. It's not guaranteeing the bonds uh, for the Indiana Finance Authority's transaction for the CWA water system in Indianapolis, but those bonds will be sold with the uh, Green Star uh, verification. I think that's about a $53 million deal, if I have that right. That's right. Very good. So um, we'll watch and uh, report back next week. Uh, hopefully there'll be some uh, movement on stimulus we can talk about and uh, continuing to watch the evolving credit landscape in munis. Thanks, guys. It's great. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. When the market is unpredictable, BAM gives you certainty. In the face of market volatility and illiquidity, BAM insured municipal bonds deliver default protection, value preservation, and a durable AA rating from S&P. BAM's insurance protects against everything that causes a default, including natural disasters, financial fraud, pension issues, and economic disruption. So while America rebuilds, BAM has you covered. BAM. Build America Mutual. Talk to your investment advisor or visit buildamerica.com.